Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we are going to be looking at Chiller Surge. Now from the other videos in this series on chillers, you should know by now that the refrigerant always flows from the evaporator into the suction line, through the compressor, down the discharge line into the condenser. And it does this so that the chiller can dump the unwanted heat that was collected from the building in the evaporator and move that into the condenser so it can be sent off to the cooling towers. Now the compressor is the driving force of this movement of the refrigerant between the evaporator through into the condenser. The compressor blades rotate, or the impeller rotates, being driven by the electric motor on the back here. As it rotates, it sucks refrigerant in through the suction line off of the evaporator and into the blades of the impeller. The angular velocity of the, the rotation of these blades causes a centrifugal force on the particles of the refrigerant, which means it flies out at all angles and is collected in the volute here. As the refrigerant flies off of the impeller blades here, it passes through the diffuser where it slows down and converts its kinetic energy into pressure. This pressure builds up in the volute and forces the refrigerant out down through the discharge line into the condenser. It flows off of the impeller blades at all angles and builds up in this volute here. In the section view here, you can see the flow path from the evaporator through the suction line into the compressor, which is rotating uh, and pushing that refrigerant out through the discharge line and into the condenser. Now it flows this way because the compressor causes a pressure difference across, across the impeller. So the low pressure side is here where it's sucking the refrigerant in, and the high pressure side is here where it's chucking that refrigerant out and that pressure uh, collects and builds up in the condenser in the discharge line. Now each compressor can only provide a certain amount of pressure difference. Each compressor is different and you'll have to speak to the your, manufa uh, your chiller's manufacturer to find out what the rating of your compressor is. Now that pressure difference caused by the compressor is known as chiller lift and that's where it's taking the refrigerant at one pressure and increasing it through the compressor into the condenser and then pushing it at a higher pressure. So for example, let's look at uh, this one here. So let's say uh, that this chiller is working and it's, its maximum rating, um, its maximum lift is 300 to 900 kPa. And that means it will take refrigerant in from the evaporator at a pressure of 300 kPa or 3 bar and it will bring that up to, it will push the refrigerant through into a pressure of a maximum of 900 kPa, 9 bar. So the chiller can provide a lift of 600 kPa or 6 bar and that's just the difference between this number and this number. Now let's say that the pressure in this condenser actually reaches 1000 kPa, 10 bar. Now obviously that is much higher than the maximum pressure uh, that can be provided from the compressor. And when this occurs, when the, the pressure in the condenser is higher than the pressure that can be applied by the compressor, then chiller surge will occur. It's important to note that these numbers are just for, uh, for, just for example purposes um, as mentioned, please do check with your chiller manufacturer to find out what your, your surge line is and what your chiller lift is also. Now when chiller surge occurs, the pressure in here has become too great and the refrigerant starts to push back and it starts to flow back through the discharge line and into the compressor, flowing the opposite way in the direction of the compressor. The compressor will still continue to rotate, still trying to push refrigerant into the discharge line and into the condenser. But the pressure is already too great, and so the refrigerant will flow back through into the impeller blades and out through the suction line into the evaporator. This is not a good scenario for the chiller. 
it can cause some really serious damage to the chiller. You'll know when this occurs because it, the chiller is going to make a really loud groaning kind of squealing noise and that noise will be coming from the, the compressor. You'll probably also experience some quite large swings in the amount of amps being drawn by the compressor also. Now the sound of that chiller surging is going to be something like this. Hear that sudden that increase in the sudden drop? That's where the pressure is re-equalized. Again, it's rising now, and then the sudden drop. So what causes chiller surge then? Well, we know it's going to be an increase in pressure in the condenser. So what might cause that then? The majority of the time, it's usually something to do with the cooling tower or the flow of condenser water between. If a partial blockage occurs in this uh, condenser return line, then the flow rate is going to change. And this might drop below the re minimum required flow rate. And then the condenser is not going to be able to dump its heat, and that's going to start to raise the pressure in the condenser. If the cooling tower is unable to reject enough heat, this will all also cause, obviously, the water to increase in temperature and that's going to restrict how much heat can be absorbed by the condenser and again it won't be able to reject enough heat and that might be caused by the drive belt breaking the motor might have a fault and break it could even be that the water distribution within the cooling tower um, has become disturbed so there could be uh, a lot of leaves inside there or something which is stopping the water from flowing um, and creating the large surface area over the inside of the cooling tower to disperse its thermal energy and so the cooling tower doesn't reject uh, the required heat and doesn't come back uh, with a, a large temperature difference additionally the pump strainer might become blocked and that will reduce the flow of water through the system the distribution tray at the top here may also become blocked with scowl and debris and things like this and also the tubes inside the condenser may become covered in scale and this would stop uh, the amount of heat transfer that can occur because it's going to change the heat transfer surface area that's known as fouling surge will also usually occur when the chiller is run at part load i.e. it is run uh, lower than the maximum um, design load which it was designed the system for and once this gets to a certain point, the refrigerant flow, flow, flow rate through the compressor it becomes too low. And this causes the surge. Some ways to get around this though is by fitting a variable speed drive or a variable frequency drive onto the induction motor which drives the compressor. This will change the speed, the rotational speed of the compressor to modulate its capacity. Some chillers may have a hot gas bypass built in and this is used to allow the capacity to be reduced while maintaining a sufficient gas flow through the compressor. Some manufacturers will also fit variable diffusers into the compressors. This reduces the gap in the, in the diffuser for which the refrigerant can flow into the volute and maintaining the gas velocity. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions please leave it in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe this video if it helps you. There's plenty more videos on the YouTube channel and some articles on the website also. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Google+.